All right. Um, I thought I'd do a fun little project. Now that I have that Heathkit uh, ETW3800 trainer, it has a plug-in for a um, 6811 microprocessor. And there is a plug-in, although it's quite rare, for an 8085 plug-in. I'm still on the lookout for one of those. Um, I thought it'd be fun to design our own plug-in. That'd be kind of cool. Um, so let's take a look at the schematics of what exists first of all. Let's make this a little bigger. Um, so this is going to be the the trainer, the the the, the mainframe, the the 3800. So there's a power supply, um, and uh, let's see here if I can make it bigger. So there's a power supply, and it uses a, uh, I believe, three terminal regulators. And we have uh, plus five, plus five, plus 12, and minus 12. And um, so that's that. Nothing, nothing fancy there. Let's go to the second page. If I can go to the second page. There we go. Because I just scroll down. All right. So there's a um, uh, connectors on the, on the front panel with the prototyping area. And these are, the, these are those connectors. So these are all the lines that come out. <clears throat> then there's the um, microprocessor. So this would be the 6800 cartridge. This is schematics for the cartridge. So there's two edge connectors. And so there's a left edge connector and a right edge connector. There's the front side and the back side. That's why there's four things here. So these are all of the, all of the signals that go down from the microprocessor board down to the motherboard. And so, like, uh, let's see, what are some easy ones? Like here, uh, there's just A0 through A, A0 through A12. Make it a little bit bigger. A0 through A12. And then over here, there's D, D0 through D7, D9 through D16, thinking ahead that there might be a 16-bit. Although on the trainer itself, these are paralleled and just seem to be 0 to 7. They gave up on the 16-bit thing. Um, then there's things like keyboards, LCDs and, uh, serial data in and out and stuff like that. So all, all kinds of things on these, on these two connectors here. All right. Then on the trainer, there's an output port, um, that go to some pins on the prototyping area, o OP0 through OP7. That's just a latch. There's an input port that's a latch. Um, there's switches that just output. Um, ones and zeros. Uh, and then there's LEDs that just light up. So those are those. These are just buffers. The keypad uh, is a scanned keypad. So you um, pull down on a column and that enables the column and then you read the data out with this latch here. So key, key buffer in, key buffer enable, um, it's that there's two key, there's two keys that are actually hardwired, the reset key and the interrupt key. Those are hardwired. All right. So, uh, we also have that weird circuit that acts as a data monitor at just ones and zeros. And, uh, that's how that, that's how the, all the circuit is just, just a logic probe. Uh, here's the keyboard plugs on here. Here's RS-232 with some buffers. Um, there's these mysterious four LEDs. Um, and one of the LEDs I believe is just power. One of the LEDs is if you've enabled the, um, EE prom plugin, I believe that one of the lights light up. And then this one that's actually LED D is actually a free LED that actually the CPU card can drive, but it's not used on the, on the, on the card that I have. And then once again, we have uh, a couple other extra connectors. This actually never showed this, but there's a there's a, a a dual row connector on the back that that you allows you to connect it with a backpack. Uh, it's just a funny thing that that um, Heath gets sold. It allows you to like uh, connect this like in a classroom environment, so you can you can go on those guys there. And then there's the actual memory cartridge. This is the EE prom. Um, all right, so then we've got the microprocessor itself. So this is a schematic for the process, the processor board. So this processor board has, has the processors, the 6811, it's got some uh, buffers here to take uh, the address and throw them onto the bus. And here's some for taking the data and throwing it onto the bus. 
It's got a ROM and a RAM and a micro because it's a microprocessor, not a microcontroller. There's some decoding for certain functions and stuff. Uh, this is how the uh, keyboard was decoded. So you do an address decoding here. You can take a look at things like it decodes the addresses into something like keyboard or um, the input port or the output port or the LCD port. So, and then these are unused. These, these uh, four here, and those go onto the front panel connector. Uh, timer generates the one hertz and 60 hertz. Those are buffered. Uh, serial data. Yeah. And then here are those connectors again. Uh, the left connector, right connector, front and back. All right. And then also on that board are a bunch of op amps. So uh, it buffers analog data that goes into the processor that has a 8-bit A to D. So we have a bunch of op amps here. And we also have a um, reference voltage using a, a TL431. All right. Um, then we've got, what else do we got here? Uh, oh, this is the memory module. These are the two, two banks of uh, memory. These are EEPROM memories. And that's it. So we need to figure out what do we want to do. All right, so I've been working on this. Um, I'm going to be using ATtiny as the processor, actually controller, um, microcontroller, either either an 814 or 1614. They're pin compatible. And here we have a 3216. So we either have a 14 pin device or a 20 pin device. I think it's 20 or 22. I think it's 20 pin. Um, and so you can populate it with either one. You don't put them both on. You, you can choose either one you want. And then I have the um, the two connectors, the left connector and the right connector, uh, front and back. And uh, I've chosen some of the signals, not all the signals, but some of them. I'm going to be using I squared C expanders to give me the data lines that might be a micro processor has. So I'm going to use this uh, TCA9555. I've never used one before, but I have them on order, so we'll see how they work. Uh, so they're 16-bit, 16, 16, uh, so this one will do the addressing, the 16 bits of address. Uh, this one will do the data, 8 bits of data. And then there's an extra port here, so I'm going to use that for some control signals like read-write or IO select. Um, and then I have another one down here, so there's actually three of these parts. And this one will handle the keyboard and the LCD. And then uh, there's just a, a port that I don't use. So I just bring that off to uh, some pads so we can use that in the future. Just solder onto them. Then I have this one little chip here that's a um, uh, HC138 that takes some of the address lines, addresses five, six, seven, eight, and nine, and, and IO select, and it creates some IO uh, addresses. Uh, for the keyboard and the in the out LCD. Yeah, you saw this in the other schematic. This is kind of duplicated from the other schematic. Um, let's see here. What else? Power supply. I'm just going to have a bunch of capacitors. I'm going to have some LEDs that light up to tell you the power supplies are working correctly. And then uh, just for fun and for debugging purposes, I put on an OLED display. So let's take a look at the board. So here's the board. Again, two connectors, front and back. Let's turn off the ground planes. Um, and so uh, here are the two microprocessors. Like I said, you either load one or the other. Here's our LEDs um, and some test points for the uh, different voltages. Here's that little OLED display that you can load if you want. And it's I squared two as well, so you can talk to it. So, um, because you're using just I squared C, it kind of frees up all of these pins on these microcontrollers, and I bring them down to pins on the front panel for prototyping. And uh, yeah, so it's basically, I use these I.O. ports to bring things onto the bus, to the micro um, trainer. And yeah, so there you go. Um, let's do a uh, 3D view. So it's going to look something, something like this. 
not a lot of parts on it. Um, this little thing here is that unused port on one of these uh, I squared C expanders. So yeah, there you go. Um, so I'm going to send this off and see how it works. <laughs>